Hey everybody, so Blake with Texas Bee Supply here. Let's talk about uh, mean bees or aggressive bees and why they are aggressive. I'm gonna try to move through this pretty quickly in 10 or 15 minutes instead of the normal 30 minute presentation that it often is. Uh, but I really wanna answer the question, um, why are bees mean? Why are my bees maybe become mean when they weren't before? And what factors contribute to that? And finally, what can we do about it? So I'm gonna share my screen here and uh, we are going to run through a PowerPoint and take a look at mean bees. So defensive bees, sometimes you may feel like this when you are dealing with your mean bees. <laughs> So not a great experience, right? <laughs> we want to avoid that experience. So the behavior you saw in that video, obviously a bit staged, um, but you shouldn't have bees all around you. And like you see in these pictures here, there should not be bees all around your bee veil, pounding on your veil, trying to get in. You know, if you raise up your hand, like you see in that top picture, you shouldn't see um, bees just all over trying to sting your, your gloved hand. That is abnormal behavior that you should not see in most cases. Um, another picture of this is abnormal behavior. You should never see bees like this around you in most situations. Um, that's not a normal bee behavior. Normal behavior is, you know, you're working your bees and sure there might be a couple of bees flying around you bumping on your veil. Um, they shouldn't follow you for 50 or 100 yards. Um, they might follow you for 20 or 30 feet, uh, but you shouldn't have a cloud of bees around you at all times or a cloud of bees following you around over a long distance. So if, the, if you're having things like that happen, let's take a look at why it could possibly be happening. So let's look at some of the top factors that influence defensive behavior in bees. So the number of hives per location certainly has an effect. If you've got two hives versus 200, or versus 20, it can certainly make a difference. Once one hive becomes, uh, once you're working one hive and one hive becomes alerted, they begin releasing an alarm pheromone and they can certainly get other hives um, stirred up. And then as you progressively work bee hives in a bee yard in one uh, visit, they get progressively more and more upset. So number of hives per location can have an impact. Now, if you've got four hives, that's not going to make that big of a difference. Um, if you've got maybe 30 or 40, that could start certainly making a difference. The other factor is sun versus shade. Bees are typically a little more grumpy in the shade versus bees in the sun. And this is especially true in the spring or in the late fall or in the winter. During the summer, um, I don't see bees being more defensive uh, in the heat of the summer. So I'm still talking about like July, August, September. Um, but outside of those months, they can definitely be more grumpy if they're in the shade. Um, those other months, they can be a little more grumpy in the shade too, but I usually feel that um, that summer shade is, is worth the sacrifice, but that can contribute. Another thing is the honey flow. Is the, is the, the honey flow on or is it not? So are your bees actively bringing in large amounts of nectar? In most areas in Texas anyway, it's going to be you know, late April through mid-June, late June, that you're going to have a honey flow. Once that honey flow ends, bees tend to get more defensive. There's not much for all those foragers to go do anymore, and they're hanging around the hive. Um, <clears throat> bees are just calmer when there's a lot of nectar, a lot of pollen coming in. So once you kind of get in those dearths, especially over the summer and going into the fall, bees naturally get more defensive. And oftentimes, if it's just a seasonal thing, they'll calm back down over the winter and then the next spring. Time of day makes a difference. Are you out there early in the morning, late in the evening, the middle of the day? Um, these tend to be a little gentler in the middle of the day when a lot of the foraging force is out of the hive. Um, the foragers are older and they can be a little more on the grumpy side. So uh, time of day makes a difference too. Now in the summertime, especially in Texas, you really want to work them early in the day. Um, because it's just so hot, but that can definitely make them grumpy. So if you're having a hive that you seems very defensive, go work them in the middle of the day if you've been doing it in the morning and see if they're defensive. A really defensive hive is going to be defensive all the time. Um, 
notwithstanding these factors. Weather's a big one. You know, if it's drizzly, if it's cloudy, if it's super windy, if it's poor weather, bees are going to be more defensive. So if you're out there um, and uh, you're working your bees and there's a storm on its way or it's drizzly or it's a really cloudy, humid day, your bees are certainly going to be more defensive. So try them again on a nice day and see if they're better. Queens and genetics play a big role. And, you know, where did you get your queens? Um, are they uh, from a more hot breeder? <laughs> um, from a from meaner hives or are they from a really a breeder who really prioritizes gentle behavior so this is a huge factor and if they if genetically they're defensive then those hives are going to be defensive all the time where i really start looking at all these individual factors is if i have a hive that isn't always defensive but is sometimes or wasn't in the past and is now um, then I start looking at, okay, what are all these different elements that I need to pay attention to that may have happened that caused them to be defensive. Now, if they're defensive and they weren't before, and it doesn't matter what time of day you go out there, or it doesn't matter what the weather's like, or it doesn't matter if all those factors don't matter and they're just consistently defensive, it could be that your old queen died and they requeen themselves. Um, and that new queen is more defensive. Cold and heat, you know, if it's really cool, really cool, especially if it's really hot, um, you know, swings in temperature can certainly all make a bit of a difference. Not huge, but a little bit of a difference in the bee's behavior. Mowing and edging. If you're mowing and edging around your hive, they do not appreciate that. Uh, if you mowed and edged around your hive and then 30 minutes or an hour later went back and checked on them, they're going to be more defensive. Or if you've looked at your bees um, and then an hour later go look again, they're going to be more defensive. So if they've been disturbed, um, that is going to make them, if they've been disturbed recently, that's going to certainly make them more defensive, whether it was a loud noise, uh, like mowing or edging, or they've been um, worked recently. Um, jarring or bumping the hives. This is a, this is a semi load of bees that got stuck um, and uh, caused quite a bit of jarring and bumping. And you can bet those bees were pretty unhappy coming off that truck <laughs> on a smaller scale. Um, again, just if you're really bumping and jarring your hives, of course, that's going to make them really defensive. So you always want to be gentle, smooth, calm motions when you're working your bees. Um, no sudden moves or jolts or bangs of the hive. Smoke is huge. So smoke is incredibly important to mask that alarm pheromone that the hives put off when they start um, when you start working them. So that smoke helps mask that alarm pheromone. And then smoke really also um, causes the bees to go start eating honey uh, instead of focusing on stinging you. So smoke and making sure your smoker is working properly is absolutely critical. I can't tell you how many beekeepers I talk to that say, hey, my bees are really mean. And I say, are you really, really clear on how to properly use a smoker? You know, is it billowing nice cool smoke every time you work the bees and nine times out of ten they'll go you know it doesn't really work well or i i don't really have the hang of it or it went out halfway through that makes an incredible difference so being able to use your smoker is absolutely critical i've got a short video here on how to light a smoker that i'm going to play because it's just so important that you're really really competent and confident uh, in how you light your smoker and i would encourage you to really practice until you get the hang of it So you can see here we're using a uh, shop towel. You can use newspaper, um, shredded paper. Uh, the key is to get a really hot flame flaming in that bottom. And so you can see in this video in a second um, that there's a literal flame coming out of this before I really add in the fuel, like the mulch. And that's really what you want. You want a, a literal flame coming out of that before you start adding bits of mulch or smoke or fuel. And so you just add in little bits at a time. You want to keep puffing. You want to keep seeing kind of a flame shooting out. Um, you want to see smoke billowing like you see in this video. And uh, and then you can, you know, as you see, then you can really kind of start filling it full with that fuel. And you want to just keep puffing, keep puffing, keep puffing. Um, and then every minute or two, uh, even once you've filled your smoke with fuel full, you want to keep puffing. 
um, to make sure that you continue to get that smoke. So this is what your smoker should look like when you're smoking your beef. You should have a tremendous amount of smoke uh, coming out of that smoker for it to be effective. So as far as what kind of smoker fuel to use, a lot of things work. You know, uh, we sell a variety of smoker fuels. You can use mulches, you can use um, pellets, you can use uh, cotton, you can use pine needles, you can use um, pine shavings. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can use effectively as smoker fuel. Just make sure you're properly protected. That's always really important. So make sure you've got, you know, boots, uh, you, that the bees can't, you know, get up into your pant legs through, wear gloves. Um, on a lot of videos, you probably see I wear these blue nitrile rubber gloves. <clears throat> the bees absolutely sting through those. <laughs> so um, you can get them thick enough. If you get like up to an eight or nine mil, it's a lot harder for the bees to sting through them. But, um, but I still get pricked through it and I still get stung through it. I, I usually only wear those if I'm going to be in and out of the beehives pretty quickly. Um, if I'm doing something like splitting or doing a lot of work, I absolutely wear leather bee gloves. The other thing I really recommend, if you have really mean bees or if you're really concerned about getting stung, get a really good bee suit. Um, we developed a suit called the Super Suit that you see here. And you can see, you know, commercially, we're out working bees every single day. Bees all over us. We run into mean bees all the time and uh, virtually never get stung because we wear these bee suits. So you can get um, a suit like our super suit and virtually never get stung through it, even if you've got really aggressive bees. So, you know, if you're concerned about it or if you do have really defensive bees, then I would recommend a really nice suit that's going to prevent those things. The very last thing, if, if all those factors, if all those variables um, aren't the cause of your hive being defensive, so if the weather's okay, your smoker's working well, um, you know, it, it's a nice, beautiful day. You're working on the right time of day. You know, if you've got all that right and they're still consistently defensive, then it's probably time to replace that queen. And so in that situation, you would want to kill that old queen and replace it with a new mated queen. And that's going to, it's going to take about six weeks to two months, but eventually that new queen's genetics will usurp um, all, or, well, all those old bees will die off. The new bees from your new queen will hatch out and uh, that'll fix the defensiveness of your hive. Um, if you're unsure about how to requeen a hive, then we've got a lot of videos on YouTube, our YouTube channel, and on our video blog at texasbeesupply.com where we really go over all the details about how to requeen a hive. So that's it. Um, that's some of the main factors to look for with defensive bees, some of the reasons that you see hives become defensive and, um, you know, and, and how to eventually fix it if, uh, if you need to.